Hygiene-based precautions are to be used in conjunction with standard precautions when providing care to patients. <coughs> Ray has been admitted with suspected measles. As measles is highly infectious, he has been admitted into a single room with negative ventilation to reduce the risk of transmission to others, the environment and staff who provide care to him. <coughs> Only staff that are fully immune to measles should provide care to Ray during the submission. The personal protective equipment or PPE required to be used by any staff who enter Ray's room should be readily available on a trolley outside the room. This includes alcohol-based hand rub, protective eyewear if required, an adequate supply of N95 masks in all available sizes, non-impervious gowns, an adequate supply of alcohol impregnated cleaning wipes and sodium hypochlorite, general waste bin large enough to dispose of the contaminated personal protective equipment after use, this should be placed in the anteroom. May Lee arrives outside Ray's room and notes the specific isolation signage. It is important to put the PPE on in the correct order and especially important to remove it in the correct order so that you can reduce the risk of contaminating yourself, your colleagues, other patients and the clinical environment. Hand hygiene is the first step when commencing any type of procedure, ensuring that the alcohol-based hand rub is allowed to dry before proceeding. To prevent contamination of Maylie's uniform, a non-impervious gown is required, ensuring that the gown is tied up at the back of the neck and around the waist. Some airborne diseases do not require the routine use of this gown, such as TB. An N95 mask must be worn and is applied by separating and lifting the two bands over your head. After moulding the nose piece to ensure a secure facial fit, Maylee performs a fit check by taking a few breaths in and out whilst watching for movement of the mask. May Lee can now enter the patient's room. Hi Ray, how are you? Hi, how are you going? Once inside the patient's room, hand hygiene is performed again and should always be performed prior to applying gloves of any kind. Do you feel up to a shower today? Uh, yeah, okay, it's been a while. Yeah, okay, okay thank you. Alright, try that a bit later then. Thank you. If contact with the patient and or contaminated environment is anticipated, non-sterile gloves are applied, ensuring that the cuffs of the gown are tucked in under the gloves to make sure that there is no skin exposed. The items which are most likely to be contaminated are gloves and hence are the first items to be removed. Next, hand hygiene should be performed, ensuring you allow your hands time to dry completely. The gown is then removed. In order to reduce the risk of contaminating yourself, it is important that the gown is removed by untying it at the back and then lifting off at the shoulders. As it is not blood stained, it can be disposed of in the general waste bin. 
Hand hygiene is again performed before removing the N95 mask. This is done by lifting the bands over the head and then disposing of the mask in the general waste bin. Hand hygiene is performed prior to leaving the anteroom. During the course of your work at Alfred Health, we have a commitment to use personal protective equipment when providing care to all our patients.